What is up everybody? My name is Ronan X and today I'm going to be bringing you a conditioning guide for Ken. So let's go ahead and get right into it with you know just talking about what is conditioning. Conditioning is pretty much throwing out something to make your opponent react in some way in a way that you want them to react pretty much. So like a short example is I throw a fireball what do I want them to do? I want them to jump, or I want them to consistently get hit by it, but overall, I, they have to deal with it in some way. So what are their options to deal with the fireball? Jump, you know, sometimes they can clank with it, but they don't really get much out of it. Um, you know, stuff like that, but mostly jump. You know, I want them to jump over it so I can, like, you know, hit them with an anti-air DP, dash back, dash forward, you know, get a combo, etc. Right? So let me talk about, um, there's, different, there's two different types of conditioning neutral conditioning and then there's disadvantage conditioning and the Hidoken thing uh, example is uh, an example of normal conditioning so I think you get the point so what I like to do in neutral is if uh, whenever a match starts the first thing I like to do is see how they deal with fireball if they jump over it a lot I can jump up there and anti-air them with my, an, aerial, an air to air option of my own you know like up air nair if they have a big meaty hitbox I'll get under them with hard up tilt if I can, if I can get there in time. If I can't get there in time and they're like throwing out low angled, um, angled aerials, like say cloud back air, I'll kind of walk forward, not dash, because sometimes you can miss space your dash. I'll walk forward right outside the range, away from the land, and then I'll put another one there. And then eventually, you know, you're just kind of chipping away at them little by little, annoying them with these fi this fireball damage. And fireball, um, and Ken's Hadoken does like eight damage by itself, so it, it, it racks up over time. So eventually, you just kind of harass them enough to be like, all right, I've got to hit this pin. And then that's where you start to see how good his advantage state can be. Because the moment they start jumping in or try to force their way in in any way, you start anti-airing them with all your iframe options that you have at your disposal. Sorry, I was just turning on uh, so you can see the iframes. So... Um, now, with that being said, uh, well, actually, no, there's actually a couple more things. So, another way I like to condition is seeing what they, how they feel whenever you're at this distance right here. Because anybody who's ever fought a Ken, fought a Ken or understands how Ken is, they know once he's in this distance, you're in danger because you, they can no longer react to any of his burst options, his dash forward tilts, etc. So, what this normally means is it makes him want to do something like dash attack, jump over, hit you with an aerial run away to the corner, throw a projectile, you know, and then they get feel pressure because they're in the corner, so they have to find a way past you, etc. You feel it. You get it. They feel pressure, so they have to do something. So, now now it's your turn to kind of just react with backdash, dash forward, and, you know, punish him with a combo of your own. They If they hold shield a lot, you have some really strong true block strings. Here's a, here's a couple I like to go for. Um... Probably one of the easiest ones I'll go, I'll go for is if I see him shielding a lot, is hard up tilt into well not that. Hard up tilt into roundhouse because it has a lot of shield pushback and does a lot of shield damage and can sometimes shield poke or shield break, depending on if they've had their shields up for too long. You can do the same thing with hard down tilt into roundhouse as well. If you throw in an extra tilt or two, like a lot of times it'll it'll make a shield and it can shield break. But if it doesn't shield break, it turns into pressure in of its own. Say you land uh, land this move right here. And it pushes them back enough. They, if they act out of shield in any way, nine times out of ten, they'll whiff unless they have a really big disjoint. But a lot of times, if it's like say cloud up B, you can back dash in time to get out of that scenario. And then now they are up in the air, and now you get a free punish. So it creates pressure all of its own, so it makes them scared of the shield. So it makes them want to move. And now when they're just moving around a lot, you're getting a lot of pokes with Hadoken. They're jumping over you. You're hitting them with hard up tilt. You're hitting them with Shoryuken. They're at like 110. Now they can die if they jump. And they, it just turns into this huge ball of fear that they feel. Because they feel if they push anything, they're just going to get hit. Right? Okay, so that's neutral conditioning. Now let's talk a little bit about... Let's talk a little bit about... Um, disadvantage conditioning and the tools we have at our disposal to pretty much you know condition them <laughs> to say the least so one of my favorite tools i use is uh hard down tilt but before i get into that any move i use that puts them into tumble turns into turns into something i condition them with so if i hit them with hard down tilt their options are jump attack um do nothing and land into a tech chase jump away air dodge in air dodge out Okay, so if they air dodge, 
in or out, you can just, you know, follow wherever they go and hit them with, like, tilts of any sort. If they do nothing, they can get jab locked in the same situation. So that covers two situations. That covers two options right there. If they jump, well, you know. If they jump, it's 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 free real estate. Get under them. If, uh... If they attack, a lot of times, if I, like, they feel like you're gonna dash forward and jump after them, they'll throw out an attack. If they do that, you can literally just forward smash. Right? So, seeing and paying attention to how they react to this move right here, or any move that puts them in the tumble, is super, super important. But, I honestly, if you have a move that's, like, a true combo into it, like... Roundhouse kick. I would just go for that because roundhouse kick can be condi you can condition with it as well. Something I'll go for a lot with roundhouse kick, especially at like lower percents. You'll definitely see this in the vods, by the way. As soon as I hit him with this, it's the same situation. They could jump, air dodge, attack, you know, whatever. And if you knock, and the thing is about this, it knocks them off stage. So what's what's instinctively what a person wants to do? They want to get back to stage. Well, if they do this, I go up there and I hit them with an up air. And now they, all they can do is drift. And they don't have a jump. And a lot of times what they want to do is, oh crap, okay, I've got to hit him. Hard up tilt. You got to hard up tilt them and you start juggling in the air and now they have no jump. All they can do is drift or push an attack button. And you kind of just, that's when you start to steamroll them. Take, they take a bunch of damage and you put them back in the corner or you take a stop. Right? Um, you can do the same thing with uh, a couple other tools like light, light, um, light forward tilt here so it has some true combos but like higher percents when it's not true you can still get some same setups similar to that what i, I just showed you with roundhouse kick um, um but my personal favorite that i love because it's probably the most dangerous one out of all of these options especially at like low to mid percents is light tatsu so light tatsu starting at 38 on most characters sends it a low angle tech chase which can lead into some really nasty jab block combos and uh I'm actually going to be making a jab block guide soon as well to show like um, all the things you can do out of a jab block on all weights and classes. But you get jab blocks. If they tech, you can do a tech chase. But the one thing they can do at higher percents is they can hold up and they can jump out of it. They can jump over you or they can jump forward. And a lot of times against smarter players, that's what they'll opt to do. So knowing like if they're going to jump over you, say, because if you like push them to the corner, a lot of times they're going to jump over you, you can back dash. And again, just play your game. You know, anti-air them, whatever. If they jump out, great. Now they're at the ledge, and now you get to start ledge trapping them. So it's a win-win. Understand these options, and know, understand how to cover them, and be mindful of everything you see your opponent doing, and you'll start to get these reads. But the thing is, is they're not even highly committable reads, because as long as you maintain, you know, stage control, and that's your main focus, then they'll come to you. You don't have to really commit hard to these options I'm showing you in conditioning. They're not hard commitments. The worst thing that'll happen is you might be wrong on the one to three chances of you getting it right. Say like, I land this 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 string right here. If they air dodge in, oh, well, I messed up, but guess what? They're in the corner because the only option they could have chose there is air dodge in or... Uh, Actually, yeah, that was it. Air dodge in, honestly. I think it's the only thing they could have done in that situation. Because that covers air dodge away and jump. Because of the air dodge away, I can actually just approach with down tilt right afterwards. And I open them up again. And guess what? They're right back in the same scenario. Um, so, yeah. I'm actually, I didn't mean to go right into this. But, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about um, crescent kick conditioning. Something I like to do is first thing I do if I land a crescent kick, I'll see how they handle that, si that, that, that string right there. Crescent Kick forward smash is not true. He doesn't actually have many true combos at all. So what they can do out of that is jump. So I see them start to jump. If they start jumping, I can start going for, at this percent, I can go for like something like I showed you with Nair. And Nair can set up into tech chases as well, depending on the percent. Or true combos like that. And at like, say, 50-ish, 50, 60-ish, I can go for... See, now they're in a tech chase. Then I can go for that. So that's really good. And you can also go for, in the same scenario, of like high, um, high, mid, high to mid percents, you can go for dare. And it can work as well. And at the ledge, when you go for this, um, the great thing about it is if they understand they can air dodge in, and you know that they can air dodge in, and they understand the, the like you know where they're at, 
Like, if you go for this, and you know you can just backdash, if they air dodge in, open them up again, put them right back to the corner. You play off of your opponent's pack panic options with, with uh, Crescent Kick. That is the most reliable way of doing it. The number one goal is to hang on to stage control and make them act first when you land this. If, you, if, if it's your first time fighting them, and you don't think that they're going to do anything, just go for it. And once you land that one time, then they're going to start rolling their face on the controller to try to get out of these setups. And that's whenever you can pretty much react to any of those options they panic out of with backdash, see what they're going to do. If they jump, they're in disadvantage. The air dodge, they're in disadvantage. And punish. That's that's the whole thing we're going for here. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, that pretty much covers my bases. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my VODs and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. And hopefully you will learn something.
that'll be the end of this guide. If you like this video, please drop a sub and hit that bell icon on your way out. If uh, you have any questions for me at all, or if I wasn't exactly clear on anything you didn't understand, please drop a comment down below and I will gladly uh, answer any questions you may have. If you really want to support me, please consider going to my Twitch account at Broninx1819 and dropping a follow, and if you really want to support me, consider subbing. Um, and yeah, that'll be it. Thank you guys so much for coming through. I am Ronin X, and I'll see you next time.